dog doesn't bite his friend, you just go snip, snip the fuck. <laughs> All right. Well, good morning, you guys. It is what's the the twentieth? It is Tuesday the twentieth. Henry, do you know what day it is? I think it's the twentieth. My phone's charging. Uh, the eighteenth. It's Tuesday. 19th? No, Tuesday, uh, June twentieth. So, yeah. so Henry. How was Korean barbecue last night? It was fucking amazing. It was good. Yeah. Let's hear this crazy story that happened. Oh, fuck, dude. I had forgot about this this morning. This fucking morning. crazy lady's last night that the... the so check this out. You're going to like this in Francisco. Uh, so start from the beginning, Henry. I'll yeah. fill in any blanks. So we're sitting there enjoying our food pretty leisurely. It's pretty awesome. Amazing. I yeah. never had Korean barbecue except the night before. It's fucking great. There's two different experiences. It was they're both equally awesome. One was the tofu house and one was Korean barbecue. Yeah, so they're both yeah. Korean but yeah, yeah, yeah. different. Anyway, so yeah, we're toward the end of our meal and some chicks are like I don't know, they were like by the door, like staring at us. Like yeah. these two ladies, like younger girls, white girls, and uh Keep staring at us and like, what the fuck is your fucking problem, basically? You know what I mean? Like, we're kind of like, hey, what the fuck? You know? Mm -hmm. Get up to leave, and the owner of the place or somebody that works there is. No, like, so right before that, the waiter walks up to this first table and goes, hey, excuse me, you guys, did anybody find a cell phone oh, in the that's bathroom? Right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they're like, no. And then he walks over to our table and goes, hey, excuse me, you guys, did anybody find a cell phone in the bathroom? And we're like, no. Nope. And he's like, are you sure? And right, yeah, he's like, please, are you really sure? Like, I'm serious, are you sure? Like, if you just found it, please just let us know. And right, yeah, no, dude, no one no, found a no fucking cell phone in the bathroom. So, continue, Henry. So, we're going to leave, stops again. Those two ladies are like, we know you went in the bathroom and took our phone to his chick. To my girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, and we're like, what the fuck is your fucking problem, yeah. basically? You know? They're like, we checked the tapes, and your girlfriend was the only person that used the checked restroom the tapes. after. Okay, so think about this, Henry. So they have a tape of that white girl going into the bathroom, right? And leaving. And then my girlfriend going to the bathroom and leaving. Do they have footage or any proof that that chick left her cell phone in the yeah, bathroom? You can't have fucking... Video no, the so that you're right. That they had a right. video of my girlfriend using the restroom after that chick. That was like a hundred percent true. Mm -hmm. And so problem. now they were not believing us in exchange for believing the girl saying, "Oh, I, I, I don't know where my phone is, but I'm a hundred percent positive that I did leave it in the bathroom." How does that work? If you don't know where something is, then how are you positive where it where it is? You know what I mean? So. Anyways, they made a big fuss. They go, the cops are coming. The cops are going to search you. You might as well just give us the phone, please. We just need the... The chick's like begging my girl. I just need my phone back, please. I don't care. I'm so... You know, just give me the phone. And we're like, dude, we don't have your yeah. fucking cell phone. They're going to probably waste them off their phone somewhere else. Yeah. And oh, I guarantee... Yeah. You guys like, just come back. Yeah. You have the phone. Yo, sure. she sure. sat there and stared at it's us. It's natural. I, I get it. Sure. You guys are fucking scumbags. You have the phone for Bro, sure. You know, we just paid $200 for... for sure. For, it was know. literally 200 right. Not yeah. using logic, but like... But I probably have her broken screen 3S. Yeah, you're right, lady. That's it. I um, came up. Meanwhile, I'm filming this vlog on a brand new iPhone 7, but yeah, did thank you for your fucking garbage. No, of course the cops didn't come. The cops did not come for the black kids beating up a white dude with a dog. The cops did not come for an iPhone being stolen fucking fucking Koreatown at 2 in the morning from a bar. Oh, boo, boo, get on the phone. Uh, Jerry, uh, there's uh, another repeated down at uh, Suck Dong that a phone uh, is missing. Hurry up, get down there. And then she's in the back taking pictures of my fucking license plate. It's like, okay, you're gonna call the DMV and ask them for my information? Wait, that doesn't work. Okay, you're gonna call the cops and say, hey, I had an iPhone stolen, I'm pretty sure, and here's the license plate of the person I'm pretty sure who stole it. Yeah, the cops usually go after all those cases no, too. So I was like, take pictures of my fucking license plate. All you're gonna have is a picture of the back of my car, you idiot. Anyways. Stealing is whack. Fuck that stupid chick for even thinking that we were thieves. So, fuck her. Whatever that place was called, Bay Jong Suck Dong or whatever the fuck it was called. Yeah, the food was really good though. The food was really good. I'll probably go back service and service The first service was terrible. Yeah. That one dude, our fucking guy that was cooking our food was the, the fucking, He oh, would turn yeah. it off every time and made us eat raw meat. Such a piece of shit. And then when I told the other dude, he told me he like gave me the fucking hand in my face. 
I was like, hey, man, can you tell that dude to stop fucking touching my goddamn grill? He's like, oh, boop, hand in your face. But it was pretty good. I wanted to slap that pussy-ass motherfucking Kim Jong-il-looking ass motherfucker, dude. He was such a pussy. I couldn't even believe it. He wouldn't even look me in the eyes when I was trying to talk to him about, like, here, look in the purse. If you think we stole it, go ahead. Uh, I think it was pretty What do you think I got in my terrible. dick? You think I got that shit up in my nuts? Like, yeah, I stole this phone. Hand it off, Sarah. I'm going to hide it in my nuts. You know what I mean? Let me tuck it in my boot in case they fucking search us. I'm going to put it in my booty cheeks. Like, what the fuck is wrong with people, man? I'm smoking fucking 200 hours worth of weed every day. You think I need a goddamn fucking stolen phone? Fuck that shit. Anyways, let's have a good day. Henry's taking off. Katie's here. Katie, you here? Yeah. Katie's here. Uh, Francisco's here. Where's Daniel? Where? In the Pornhub room? Chilling. Sarah got accused of stealing a cell phone last night. Where? Korean barbecue. What the fuck? Yeah. She went and used the restroom after a chick that supposedly left her phone in there. Dude, us? Yeah, you. Because that would really help us out right now. <laughs> we would be on the up right now if we had that uh, one more three S fucking on deck. Yeah, I mean that's what happened. They were like those people right there. Meanwhile, you're in Koreatown. They're stuck in triads and shit, man. You know? The Korean dudes wouldn't even look at us in the face when they were like trying to talk to us about it. They're like, "We're calling the cops. The cops are gonna search you." So then to wrap this up. I was like, you know what? I'm not waiting around for you fucking idiots. So I, I started like taking Sarah's purse and showing them the contents of the purse. Like, look, it's not in here. And they wouldn't even look at us. They wouldn't look at us or they were just like, nope, you stole it. Nope, we won't even fuck with you anymore. We just need someone to blame. You know, and so I was like, okay, fine. You don't want to see that we don't have the fucking shit. So I was like, fuck you. You're not the cops. You're not anything. I'm fucking out of here. You're a restaurant, you know? Yeah, that was the point. So I opened the door, and I pulled it over. I was like, come on, you guys. Like, continue to walk right past these fucking idiots. That was the right move. Dude, I'm like, you can't hold me. And if you hold me, I'm going to assault you. Like, I promise. I fucking promise. Yeah. So I don't think that dude wanted none because he didn't do shit. He just was like, he like stood in front of the door. And as soon as I opened the door, he was just like, um. I guess he's leaving. <laughs> yeah, but, so then they like came out and tried to take pictures of my car. And I just fucking backed out mad slow. I'm like, go ahead. Take all the pictures you want. Yeah, like, what is, what is that? Well, it's not going to do anything. The cops don't do anything like that. They're not cops. You can't just report and say, hey, somebody, I'm pretty sure somebody stole something from me. Here's their license plate. Go get them. You can't even, like, even if they don't do it. It wouldn't matter. They can't even do it. Anyways, fuck that bitch. Fuck that bitch. Fuck that bitch. Yeah, it was so funny. Sarah was like, why don't you look on the find my iPhone thing or whatever or call the phone? And they're like, well, you guys turned it off, so now we can't – it doesn't work. I go, oh, yeah, we, we got you. We got you. Yeah. Dude, she fucking broke it down how we fucking stole her shit. Little – I mean, let's just use the, the simplest logic of maybe she didn't leave it in the bathroom. Because you're right, Sarah did use the restroom after her. Like, they checked the video, surveillance, tapes. But is there a surveillance of her holding a phone, walking into the bathroom, and then coming out, no phone? Like, unless there's that video, then what the fuck are you showing us? Yeah. All you're showing is that Sarah used the bathroom. I mean, like, I can see why someone would blame me. You tatted. Like, I look like I would steal your iPhone. Sarah, it was, and then she sat there, the lady sat there with her arms crossed staring at us for the last like 20 minutes of our meal. <laughs> Love Fucking assholes. Korean barbecue. Shout out Korean barbecue. Damn, Sarah, that looks good. Looks like I'm gonna make a mess right now. Yeah, I guarantee it. A Katie mess. You gonna put some lime on there? Yeah, I'm gonna try to pee first. Step one. Step one. Oh, sorry. Careful. <laughs> Graceful Katie. What'd you get, Henry? So, Paramount? Oh, yeah. Soft potatoes. Delicious. So, it looks good. Dig in there, dog.
cigar is pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. It's different than my shit. But it smokes pretty good. It's a good fucking wrap. Yeah. Sherb sure, God. Sherb sure, God. <laughs> So today, I got some terrible news via Instagram, which is crazy that this is how we're getting our news the fastest, but it seems like in our generations that are all melding together that it's the fastest way to get any information as far as if somebody is hurt or passes away or maybe their dog is kidnapped or any weird thing. It's kind of cool because my friend... Uh, different story but my friend got her dog stolen a year ago and was it got back to her because of Facebook and the Facebook messages anyways so today I learned about uh, a man prodigy passing away and it really bummed me out there's been a lot of we've lost a lot of big ones you know David Bowie and Prince <sighs> the last year and it's been a rough one but prodigy hits home to me particularly because of how he uh, affected me and how I enjoyed hip-hop music. And in, uh, in 89 I got into hip-hop music because I'm 36 and I was born in 81. 89 when I was 8 years old I switched over from liking like Michael Jackson, shit like that, Beach Boys, uh, Tina Turner, to liking hip-hop music and I got into Digital Underground, and LL Cool J and Big Daddy Kane. And I thought those dudes were the illest. They had a really cool, funky party style. And I really thought that, you know, I really tied in with hip hop at that point and, and figured out that it spoke to me and that I liked the, the beats and the rhymes and the culture and everything about it. A few years later, as hip hop started progressing, you know, and Easy E and Two Life Crew in the early 90s were like the hot shit. I started realizing that I liked that more gangster tone and like talking about, you know, drugs and women and guns and just all that crazy shit because it was just so fucking crazy to me being a suburban kid. And then, uh, 95 was the first year that I heard Mob Deep. And I remember hearing him and thinking, man, this was the sound that I was looking for. Super chill beats, really calm collected but really gangster and it was coming from like 18 year old kids and in 95 I was 14 so they were only a few years older than me it was crazy to me to hear 18 year old kids talking about street hustling and real life shit it breaking it down in terms that I could understand and to music that I really enjoyed listening to so fast forward 22 years later, still listen to Infamous, still listen to murder music, and they're the most like replayed albums in my collections. It's crazy how how they've stuck with me for 20 year, 20 plus years of music, you know, and going through phases of liking different shit and always, you know, referencing different eras, but I always came back to literally always came back to the Infamous Mob Deep. And when I made hip hop beats, I used to use Mob Deep samples, and I would name my tracks off of lines that were in Mob Deep songs. And when I moved to New York, it was crazy to me that I could see things like, uh, what the fuck were they called? The Long Island Projects, or I can't remember the LIC, getting to see the Project 40, 41st side and Vernon, and seeing that and being like, damn, this is where they were rapping about. Uh, for the 41st side of things and shit. It was dumb crazy to me to see all that and be, have that be such a part of my youth. Anyways, shout out to my man Prodigy. We lost a fucking good one. He's the man. His music affected us in so many ways and just him as a person affected all, a lot of people more than they even realized. He's the real GOAT. I'm really glad to uh, have the experiences I have with Mob Deep. I'm really sad that I, uh, I never got to see them live and it was, it's kind of a bummer, but you know, I'm trying to think.
I maybe did see them live, actually. I like a Rock the Bells joint or some shit. I'm gonna have to do research on that because I'm, I'm having a memory of seeing them, but I can't really remember the specific show. Anyways, shout out Mob Deep, shout out Prodigy. Rest in peace. Here, film this. Let's see. Because this doesn't look right, and whenever it doesn't look right, sometimes you get a double. And I've never filmed the double. Oh, I knew it. Double, double. Look, it's a, dude, this is, is the rarest. Triple? Is that a triplet? It's like a 2.5. That's like two babies and a half. That was the craziest one ever. Boom. You got oh, it. The devil. I knew something was up with that. Ta da. My brother was in the video for like the basic training. Yeah. And they do that smoke test and shit. The, like, um, yeah. I know. Uh, so tell me what it was like to get uh, pepper, spray. pepper spray. It's the worst shit ever. It's, Why, it's what what happened? Spray. Why did they even. They needed somebody to just show well, up what it did? Well, okay, so we took a class on it. And from taking a class on it, they wanted people to actually go through the intensity of it. And because the, once they spray you, you everyone, know, like, not everybody, because it wasn't it wasn't like a mandatory thing. But a lot of people did, you know, sign up for it. I was one of the people to sign up for it. Right. Know? I thought it was gonna be like regular pepper spray you buy in stores and shit. It's not that. You know, it's like a thousand it's times worse for a, to take down an elephant. Yeah, I mean, shit. <laughs> like, I, I wouldn't want to spray a dog with it, for a fact. If a dog was biting me, I would think about spraying them because the shit sucks. Like, I would probably rather shoot them in the hip or some shit. Like, that shit, <laughs> it sucks so bad, bro. And they spray you. First of all, this shit has, like, real, like, hibernero-type peppers yeah. in it, like, diced in it and shit. And they turn you around, spray you across the top of your, eye, your eyebrows, tell you to stroke your eyes in a blistering sun until it drips down in your eyes. You can't start the obstacle course until it hits your eyes. And you start freaking the fuck out and you're tripping out. And then the drill sergeant is like making you wait and then he just tells you to go and there's like eight obstacles you gotta run through. And you got people there like trying to like take your weapon and take your, your you gotta handcuff a guy and he's trying to fight back. You really, he's really trying to get you off of him and you really have to handcuff him. It's fucking crazy, dude. Like, and the whole while your pepper like, spray. While your pepper spray. And grown as men fail to their knees like they was the just, first step the, the, some of them the first step yeah so i seen women as soon as they hit, hit their face they just bugged out like and i seen only maybe one or two people one or two guys do it that hit it no we all finished it it was you it, there you was no to. option you have to finish but i seen one or two that got hit with it and just walked through like it was no. nothing like fucking animals <laughs> like these guys are bah! yeah basically like they're that would be I'm this dude right here. Probably. Me, I was a little bit more on like the little, the, the, the crybaby kind of side. That shit, it sucks so bad. It sucks. Right. To the point where we were taking, because uh, aloe vera like soothes burning, mm -hmm. right? So we were taking um, hand sanitizer that had aloe vera in it and literally wiping it in our eyes and across our face. Hand sanitizer. Because that would feel better than. Way better. Light years. Is it cool? The yeah, right kind of like the light uh, aloe vera in it kind of soothed you for a little bit. And we did it, and they had the big metal fans, and you stand in front, and then was like, there was so many people just gathering in front of the fans that you just couldn't get fresh air there, and people were just running blocks and miles, just running down, running trying to get like, some fresh air on their face. Yeah, it was insane. Oh my god, it was insane. Yeah, would you I'm do trying. that? Yeah, but like my boys paid me like two hundred bucks to get uh to get tasered. I that did that shit though. So. <laughs> that sucks. That should have felt like a giant scorpion like attacking my quad. Yeah. You I see these tattoos I do? Yeah. Still fresh. Yeah, was, man, so. You did it on your legs? You did the taser? Yeah, on my thigh. Fucking, uh. Oh, yeah. uh, it wasn't the shoot one though. No, no, it was Usually, if one. it's a training exercise, they'll turn you around. Yeah. And then either somebody's holding both arms on um, one person on each side or they'll put you on your knee turn you around somebody shoots you like in the top of your back uh, I got a table and you're like Wah! yeah and then like, they lay you down you know cause two people got your arms and when they hit you it's a wrap like once that thing hits you it's a, that's it unless you're really really fat crazy if your muscles like oh, it's a wrap bro yeah cause it's just like it's a wrap yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it that is it if you're like he really heavy set I've seen some of those cats like had to get it like a couple times but before they really felt what? it yeah like two people had to like hit him like, at the same time. Type shit. They were just like, hit him with another one! <laughs> <laughs> hit him with another one! <laughs> like, that's fucked yeah, up. Yeah, it's. Man, I, just, I don't want to ever do that again. 
the taser, I've been, I've been tased a couple times. Like, in the military, I've been tased a few times. Just for like, once was because we had to. Another one was for demonstration purposes. And then your boy got you Um, no, and then another time my first, He was in Santa Monica uh, and he was out drinking. <laughs> <laughs> nah. The, uh, so we get slip, we get like, uh, permits when you go through it. Like, showing that you did it. Mine was old. It expired, so I had to get it again. But when the OC spray, when the pepper spray expired, I, n I never did it again. I told them, like, you can do whatever you want to me. I'm never going to do that again, ever. And that's what it was. They just, that's what <laughs> they it is. Around. That's what it is. They, <laughs> they didn't, they didn't, like, I didn't get in trouble or anything, but they just never did it because they would always skip me for whatever reason. Yeah, like, come straight. Like, that's it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Turned out good, huh? Yeah, turned out fucking sick, dude. Fire. Bless you. Bless you. <coughs> Katie, you want to check it out? Yeah. Kate Lance. Yeah, what the fuck is that? Sick. 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 Burn. All right, me and my man Caveman are about to go check out Sizzla for night two. Saw him last night, but I'm gonna go check him out again. Big up Sizzla. Yeah, so we're excited. We're gonna go smoke some weed. Chill. Yeah, smoke some crazy some weed <laughs> with the homies. Massive amounts of weed. Yeah, big gas, big gas. So we're going this way. Yeah, should be cool. Uh, excited to see Sizzla again. Try to take some more pictures and yeah, should be real fun. Rest in peace. Oh yeah, recipes prodigy as always. What uh, tell the people about your prodigy uh, experience? Yo, prodigy performed that my my like fourth fight. It was New York City versus Austin. They did all. It was just it was crazy. It was During just, the fight or after the fight? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like uh, the intro, like right after uh, one of my friends' fight, and they just came in right into the ring. I just started fucking performing. It was awesome. That's crazy. Rest in peace, Prodigy. He's the man. Prodigy. Oh, man. Bye here with my boy smoking big gas. Good, bro. Follow us on Instagram, locally baked glass. What is it? Locally baked glass. <laughs> locally baked glass. Right <laughs> locally baked. <laughs> All right. Check him out. Locally baked glass. The shit. We out here at Hitman Coffee Shop. Kevin. Yes. <laughs> Kevin's in the building. Thank you, brother. This yes, weed tastes great. <laughs> Yo, this dude fucking failed dude, on the totally. fucking one through a hundred number. To, I have guess to it and don't I have tell to. me. All right, do Three more. Damn. Seventy-seven. All right. No. Twenty-seven. No. Oh no, I haven't changed it at all. No, I believe him. I believe him. I believe him. <laughs> <laughs> Dougie's magic number is uh, age six. Seventy. Ah. Yeah, no, that's a seventy. That's I said a... no because it wasn't seventy, bro. <laughs> Give it to me, hot and cold. Man. Give it to me, hot and cold. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible, terrible. Yeah, hey, Kevin. Yeah, we live, baby. We got one of these on your lap, baby. Bro, I'm gonna need that phone. I'm gonna need that lift down, yeah. Well, watch her now. If you can like to celebrate My girl, she begs me and me are gone for a date in. From Jamaica to Africa, Europe to Beijing. I said, you go, and in whatever crop you plant, may your plants prosper, okay? Somebody say, Jay!
Experiences, beautiful faces, a lot of beautiful places. Yeah, ain't nothing without the fans, you know what I'm saying? So, once again, I want to raise my hand above it. A hand say, Yeah, big respect to the most high. Yeah. Thank you to all the people for the support on the life of a getting in tour, right? Marlon, I shall step forward, rush, shy, low, pressure, boss, by a medical determined. You don't know. So, this is the same. It's always good to prescribe love unto the people. And the movement in Augustown is all about maintaining your roots, your culture, being positive, being truthful to who you are and where you're from, surrounding communities 
in our country we would like to increase the literacy programs where we can help the eradicate crime and violence. So this movement in the some community is a movement in part and parcel of the community and community-based organization along with the Sisla Youth Foundation. You know, we've managed to amalgamate all these um, foundation and organization. You know, the Sisla Youth Foundation is a charitable foundation and we're using it as a stepping stone to get to the world and to the people to offer better treatment to people and the children in the world. Yeah. So in the community of Augustown, we're basically trying to just um, rise above all the downhill and celebrate an example for the world with beautiful people being a part of such. So it's zero murder, no matter what it's going to throw zero murder Augustown. So more love, more blessing to you all. Rastafara. Yes. yes. Now, so Thanks before so you go, share time. with the people out there who may not understand or understand Rastafari. What makes you so passionate about your music, and what makes you so consistently committed to His Majesty Rastafari? What makes me so passionate about the music is that people they are always passionate about us as singers. <laughs> And musicians, as they um, rise in the morning, they're going to be start playing their favorite song, their favorite artist. They're very passionate about the artist, so he does not love what to do, we're passionate about the fans and the music also. And uh, with um, an real, with, with, with an emperor such as His Majesty leading the forefront, showing us positive vibration and how we should have a community, a world community, and how we should relate to each other as to nation building and cultural integration. That's just the best way. And I've seen His Majesty as the best example to show um, to the world our highlight and to the youths of today so they can step away from the crime and the violence and make themselves a better person in this land. Right. Rastafari blesses and says it. Sister Kalaji, thank you so much for your energy. He said something to me the other day that touched my heart. He said, Empress. I'm stepping forward to represent the nation and I'm opening up the kingdom to my brothers so they can share the rewards and they can build this nation together. This is the Life of a Ghetto Youth Tour. Once again, follow us on Instagram at Life of a Ghetto Youth. Follow Sisla Kalanji at Sisla876. Follow Pressure Bus Pipe at Pressure Bus Pipe. Follow Ross Shiloh at Ross Shiloh Music. Follow Marlon Asher at Marlon Asher. Follow Vast Productions at Vast Productions. And the young Melaku, follow him at Melaku Official. Right about now, we have a very special premiere before you go. The Life of a Ghetto Youth album is available now on iTunes. You can pre-order early. You can get this blazing album. It is definitely a classic, timeless album featuring some of the biggest reggae artists doing some of the most beautiful collaborations on some of the most beautiful music. Right about now, I would like to get uh, my little assistant, if he's down there, Chris, if we can pull up that Mary Jane video. That would be exciting. So this video was shot. So I got way too fucking high last night. Sherbert, how about you? Yeah, we were high. We were dumb high. We were crazy high. Ah! So high that I forgot to make the outro and run red lights. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.